recording. All right, so now it's being recorded. All right, so while we're waiting for everyone to join us, let us first say thank you for to, uh, joining today's webinar and introduce ourselves and the topic for today's discussion. So the thing that we're going to discuss today would be how to improve financial reporting for your next board meeting. Today, it's me, Alex Kesselman, and Nick uh, on a call. So let me first introduce myself. I'm Alex Kesselman. I am a solution engineer here at Aprilumax. And for the past seven years, my main job was to try to understand what are some of the challenges that our customers facing globally and what type of technology I, we can implement in order to resolve that. Again, with me on the call, Nick George from Spotlight Reporting. Nick, over to you to introduce yourself and your role in the business. Hi, everyone. My name is Nick George. I'm a product expert at Spotlight Reporting. I've been with the company for over 10 years, one of the first employees. I've had many different roles from sales, support, training, education. And uh, more recently, I've been in the product space, helping to develop new features for our customers, as well as uh, understanding our customers' needs so we can continue to implement and enhance our product. It's great having you here today. All right, so what is on our agenda for today? We'll start with a short poll, just to understand a bit more about you guys here, those who are joining our today's webinar. Then we'll briefly talk about what is Approval Max and where we came from. Then we'll take a look on how Approval Max can be used to add the value during the board meeting, how you can streamline your approval process, how you can create a very strict and auditable uh, approving process and financial controls. Then once we'll cover that, we'll move to the Spotlight Reporting and we'll learn what is Spotlight Reporting. Then we'll talk about how Spotlight Reporting product help board members make informed decisions. And then at the very end, we'll have Q&A section where both of us will answer hopefully most of your questions. But at the same time, we have some colleagues here on the background who will be helping us during the, during the presentation, during the webinar, answering some of your questions. So feel free to drop any of your questions along the way in the Q&A section of Zoom. So we simply won't miss anything. All right, I think, I think the goals are set. Now we can move on to the actual presentation, to the actual demo. So first of all, let's start with a short poll, just to understand a bit more about you guys. So I'll start the first poll and it's a multiple choice. So feel free to uh, add as many things as you need. That will help us to identify where we are at. All right, that's awesome. It's, I see the very engaged audience straight away within just a couple of seconds. We see majority of people already uh, answered, the, answered the poll. Mm -hmm. Let's take another maybe 10, 15 seconds for the last last few guys who is not yet voted. So feel free to make some last votes. All right, I think let's take another eight, seven, six seconds exactly a one minute all right so i'm ending the poll and as we can see here i've shared the results with you guys so everyone can see where we're at we see that for almost majority of uh, those who is attending today's webinar are using zero and at the same time we have some split in between approval max spotlight reporting and some additional tools that are in the app stack that's perfect it will give us some understanding of where we're heading to now have another poll that we want to ask you about identifying some of the current issues or problems that you're facing with the approval process or maybe with the reporting process. So just to understand what are some of the things uh, we have here. So poll number two, launch. So again, this one is a multiple choice, so feel free to add as many things as needed. <clears throat> All right, thank you so much. We see a lot of engagement. <laughs> Already majority, but 
feel free to add as many things as needed. All right, last 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And end the poll. Okay, so what do we see here? Let me share the results. First of all, what do we see here? That vast majority of attendees today having the main issues when the reporting processes takes to manual and error prone. But at the same time, we see at the same time, like as we've seen actually before, reporting for board meetings takes too much time. Same goes for some incorrect and complete coding. So it all comes when it when we want to bring the data and we, how to how we're going to consolidate these data into one big report and how would we actually process the whole thing. Awesome. So let me stop sharing this. Uh, stop sharing the results and we can actually dive in into the presentation. And what I'll start with it's. A topic about what is approval max and how approval max can help help you with building up this clear data and this clear approval process. So just very very briefly, what is where approval max came from and what do we do? About six years ago, in 2016, approval max was founded, and since that time we became quite a big part of both Zero and QuickBooks One ecosystem. Moreover, right now we're actually also integrated with Oracle NetSuite. So if you are the client of Oracle NetSuite, feel free to give it a try. So if we'll take a look on the Zero Marketplace, for example, we will find more, more than 250 plus five star rating reviews from the customers and partners who are using our product on the day to day basis. At the same time, in 2020, Approval Max became Zero App Partner of the Year, starting from New Zealand market. Then next year, 2021, we became Zero App Partner of the Year once again, but this time in UK market. And this year, 2022, we became the finalist for the same award. However, what do we do? And how can we help you during the board meetings? Well, the main idea here, if we'll take a look on the companies out, out there, we'll see that the vast majority of them are still using some kind of a redundant, outdated ways of how, how they're going to approve their financial documents. A majority of them are still using some kind of a paper-based approval system where they would literally print out the document, go through the office, trying to receive a physical stamp on it, and then they will send it via postal mail, which is very outdated and it's really hard to manage some, such things you need to keep archives you need to store all of this paper you need to print it out it takes a lot of outright costs and especially we're all trying to live in this sustainable society where going paperless is a very important thing to do therefore we see that a lot of other companies they've switched from the paper-based approval system to the emails which is might be quite good if you're maybe just one or two people within the team but still it's not scalable enough it's hard to keep track on everything that's been approved versus not you need to send all of these multiple notifications and simply once your team is getting larger and larger it becomes a game of cat and mouse where you need to keep track on everything what's going on and you need to know exactly where each and every financial document should go to and that is what approval max is trying to resolve our main goal here is to completely eradicate any need for paper or email based approval system the way we're doing that is by creating a multi-step and multi-level approval workflows where each and every person, each and every approver will know exactly what they need to approve based on the rule that we provided to them. And for approvers, the whole process becomes very simple, very straightforward, because the way it goes, we can simply approve our documents via our mobile app or maybe via email notification or via web application with all the essential data provided. So rather than we'll be just approving financial documents based on our intuition, we can have a very strict and auditable spend control where data such as your budgets, your original purchase orders, all the line items, all the attachments will be just within one place and you'll have fast and easy access to that. At the same time, for security purposes, Approval Max becomes sort of like a shield between your accounting system and the users who is actually approving things. There is, to be frank, there is no real need for you to, have, to give access to your users, to your accounting software. So they won't be exposed to all the financial data, all the financial statements. It is much better to give them limited access only to the things that they allow to see, what they allow to approve, and that will be the only thing they will be able to do. From your side, from the accountant or a bookkeeper side, the whole process makes it a bit more secured from the way that once a person from the approvers team will make their decision and once we'll gather all of the decisions, only then this request will go automatically into your accounting software with a very important 
a PDF document. It's called the audit report, which will show you who made the decision, when they've made that, and why they've made that. So then you will have a clear auditable control on all of your expenditure based on the data rather than the intuition of the person who is making this decision. So speaking about some of the key features of Prolomax, as I've mentioned already, the main, the core idea behind the product would be its multi-step, multi-level approval workflows. So we have a separate workflow for both accounts payable and account receivable side. Purchase orders, bills, credit note, sales invoices, we can cover all of those things at the same time. But it is not only about the workflows. There is actually much more behind the product. So things like build to PO matching, let's say, if you want to have even more robust spend control, where you would raise your purchase order, submit it for approval, receive an approval. Then once you receive a supplier invoice, you can match as many bills against this original PO and see what is your expenditure, how much money you've left, and what is your balance on the purchase order. Things like budget checking, which will allow your approvers without having any access to the actual zero budget manager, still have an understanding of what is what budget is allocated to that particular tracking category or to that particular account code. Things like customizable reports, so you can build up the reports that will show you all the relevant data, maybe based on the department level, and to see how many bills are pending approval and who are we waiting for, how many bills were already approved and how long the decision took and how, how many bills were already paid and what was the payment date. So all of that is available for you straight away within the product. In addition to that, fraud detection and analysis tool, which will allow you to keep track on some potential and fraudulent activities. Let's say if someone is trying to bypass the workflow or if someone is trying to change things after the final approval. And it's very important to keep track on some potential fraudulent activities. That is all possible within Aprilomax. And of course, approving, raising, seeing, doing build to PO matching, budget checking, all of that is available for you on the go via mobile app, which is available for both iOS and Android. So with that being said, let's take a look on the actual demo very briefly and see the way we can build up these workflows and how we can implement that to our day-to-day -day work. So what are we seeing right now? And let me give you a bit of a context. Once you'll start your free trial, there is a 14 days free trial, and I hope you'll do that after this webinar. What you'll see once you'll connect your ProMax account to your Zero or QBO or Oracle NetSuite account, it's all of your Zero connected approval workflows. Basically, in a simple words, approval workflow, it is nothing more than just a sequence of approval steps where you can provide a unified process for all of your team members to approve their financial documents. It might be that you will be approving purchase orders, might be bills, credit notes, whatever you can think of is available for you straight, straight away from here. So then we can start build our approval process here. So if I'll take a look on my build creation review and approval workflow, what I'll see here, it's a very simple structure. On the left side of the screen, I'll have all the different ways how I can streamline my bills into my approval max account. You can simply put your bill into a wait and approval status. Let's say if you're using Hubdoc or maybe Data Molino, or maybe if you're just manually creating your bills in Zero. Once you'll put that into a wait and approval state, approval max will automatically pull this document and run through the sequence of your approval steps. Or it might be that you want to create your bills manually here in Approval Max, and you can give access to your users what type of things they allow to use when they're raising those bills. Or if you're using Dext, you can have a direct integration between Dext, Approval Max, Zero, or QBO. So then once you've digitized things with Dext, you can just simply publish that straight away into your Approval Max account, gather all the decisions, and only then it will go into your Zero file. But here on the right side, that's where all the magic actually happens. That's where we define rules for each of every of our approver. Here in my example, I have only two approval steps at the moment, like managers and the CFO and CAO. What if I would like to add some additional steps in between? This process, it's very, very straightforward and very visual. We can just simply click on a plus sign, which will create an approval step for us. We can move it and drag it whenever we want to. We can give it a name. Let's say it will be our legal department. And then out of list of users, and we can add as many users as we want to. There is no limitation on that. We'll create an approval matrix. Approval matrix, it is simply your data from your zero file, like suppliers, like your tracking categories, like your nominal codes, like your amount thresholds, and your users who will be approving things. 
So let's say I want to make sure that these guys can only approve things that are over or equal to 3000. Well, that's my British account, therefore it's in pounds. But if you have an Australian one, you'll have it in Australian dollars. And maybe for account code, let's say bank fees and audit and accountancy fees. While Mike will be approving everything from general expenses and direct expenses. And Peter will be approving everything else except for these four. So I'll create a rule uh, account does not match. And I'll add all of these four values. General expenses and direct expenses. All right. So now, just like that, within a couple of seconds, we can create a very simple or very complex workflow, which will work seamlessly on the background for our users. And everyone from our team will have a clear understanding of what the process should look like and where each and every document will go to. But now from the user perspective, if we'll take a look back in, into my main menu and we'll go into requires my decision screen, which is the main screen that your users will see, here they will find all of the requests that awaiting their approval based on the rules that we provided to them. So for example, this bill from approval Max Germany GmbH for Banana LLC, we have it straight away all the relevant data that came from our zero account. So I have all of my line items. I can straight away see what is my total amount. I can make my decisions straight away, approve or reject. And if I'm rejecting that, it will ask me to provide the reason why I'm rejecting this bill. I have my attachments. So if I have an invoice or maybe a quote, I'll be able to see that in full screen or in side-by-side -side mode. Moreover, if I am using zero budget manager and I keep my budgets over there, I'll be able to pull those budgets here in your approval max account. So your approvers in real time will be able to see the data and compare that to the bills or purchase what is they're approving at the moment. So you have all the relevant data based on your tracking categories and based on your nominal codes. So for example, this one, this bill from approval max Germany GmbH is for product department for account code subscriptions. Therefore, I will only see budget for that particular department for that particular account code. I will see what is my remaining budget. I will see the impact of the bill that I'm approving right now, and I can see the status of that. If I want to dig in into the numbers, I can always click on the budget itself and I will see the overall picture or month by month. So I can see what is my remaining budget, how many bills and purchase orders I've already approved and how many of them are on approval. So it makes perfect sense for my users without asking budget holder to take a look straight away within one screen and make my decision based on these numbers. On top of that, if I want to keep track on the full cycle of my purchasing, if I want to raise the purchase orders first and then I'm receiving my supplier invoices, I'll be able to match those things together. And it's not only one-to-one -one matching, it is rather I can match as many bills or as many purchase orders as needed. And I can allocate certain amounts from one to another. So let's say I will add this purchase order here. Oh, no, this one is already fulfilled. Well, anyway, and then once we're happy with what we're seeing, we'll just simply click on approve and this request automatically goes into our zero account. It stays under awaiting payment state. And moreover, for each request that we are approving, we are generating thing called the audit report, which is now being generated. But in a second, we will find that it's already no, it still take some seconds. Now. <laughs> so now, after a few seconds, it's being generated and it will show us exactly who made the decision. In that case, it's going to be Alex Kesselman under manager step. He made his decision approved and a date and timestamp. Same audit report automatically attached to your zero file. So you will always have a clear auditable process for your financial documents. So now, if I'll go back to the presentation, open the slideshow. We've made some research and we've been, we were asking our customers how much time do they spend on approving a single invoice. And we see that the, those there are some extreme cases where companies spending about two weeks on approving a single invoice, but average without adding any automation tools, it takes about seven to eight days to approve a single invoice. And it's not only the time, it's also adding some additional things behind that, like incorrect and incomplete coding, people making their decisions on the last state, therefore we need to make it super fast. And that brings us to some additional challenges like missed or delayed payments, 
uh, some potential fraud activities, and all types of additional challenges. Once you start adding automation tools, it will not only bring you with unified process across the board, so everyone will know exactly what they need to do on the time that we were asking them. Moreover, it will reduce the average approving time from the seven days to only about four hours. And talking about the board meetings and creating the report for the board meetings, it makes its perfect sense when the users, when the approvers see the actual data up to date and they're making their decisions based on the data rather than the intuition. And once we have meaningful data and meaningful decisions, then with that data, we can build up the meaningful, meaningful reports and meaningful forecasts for the future, uh, for the future quarter, for the future year. So with that being said, I want to move on to the spotlight reporting and give a mic over to Harry. Harry, um, Nick, sorry, I just recently had another webinar. So Nick, over to you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Nick, I say you're on a mute right now. Thanks very much, Alex. I love seeing that demo of um, Approval Max. Every time I, I see it, it, it just blows me away about uh, what you guys have done at Approval Max. So definitely a tool worth checking out. So uh, let's talk about Spotlight reporting now. In case you haven't heard about Spotlight reporting, we're a company based out in Wellington, New Zealand. We have 60 staff in seven offices around the world and home offices and everything else as we've gotten used to over the, these last three years. We've, we've been around for over 10 years, and through that period of time, uh, our main uh, customer base has been accounting firms um, in New Zealand, Australia, UK, US, Canada, Singapore, and, and in various other places, South Africa, Asia, and the like. It's quite exciting, the diverse range of customers we've got coming through. We also have uh, many businesses that use Spotlight as part of their in-house reporting to the board. We launched 10 years ago as Zero's first reporting add-on. And since then, we've won a number of their um, App Partner of the Year awards in New Zealand, Australia, and other countries, as well as being finalists. We do integrate with a number of other accounting solutions, such as MYOB, QuickBooks, Sage. Um, and we also do have an Excel import for, for those uh, clients of yours who perhaps just won't give up Excel. There's a lot of investment we put into Spotlight. Uh, so we started off with one product, we grew to about five and we sold one off to zero. And we've still got four in our stable that we're continually adding to and enhancing and improving based on feedback from customers. So that's a little bit about the background of that Spotlight. You might be wondering though, why Spotlight reporting? How is Spotlight reporting gonna help you? Well, maybe I can just give you the background. You see, Spotlight Reporting is a tool that grew out of accounting firm, and it was designed to solve the problem that you all have, reporting to the board. You see, going back 10 years or so, uh, Richard, the founder of Spotlight Reporting, he had his own boutique advisory and accounting firm in Wellington. And one of the things he used to do for all his clients, he was a, a, a director on a number of boards, was actually prepare a board report. And that typically involved uh, yelling over to me as a, one of his junior accountants to go ahead and prepare the Spotlight report in Excel. And I'm sure we've got a few kind of grinning faces going on, you know, the pain of trying to create a report in Excel. Powerful, very functional tool. But um, as we saw in the poll, it's very prone to errors. It takes a lot of time, it's difficult, um, and so many other issues with Excel. So from there, the idea of Spotlight grew. We were doing these Spotlight reports in Excel, but why couldn't we come up with something better? So Richard went and uh, created Spotlight reporting. We leveraged all the different APIs and technologies that are available to connect to Xero and YB QuickBooks so that we could take away the, the biggest hurdle or the pain that we have, which is getting the data in. And then by creating a system that had templates, that had rules and everything else, we would remove the errors. We would remove the time consuming aspects of the report so that as accountants, as advisors, as CSFOs, you could actually spend time less on actually checking the values and whether they're correct and actually analyzing it and report to the board. So that's why we recommend using Spotlight Reporting. It's a tool built by accountants for the exact purpose of reporting to the board and higher management. And we have four different products, reporting, forecasting, dashboard, and multi. Each of these products do a different uh, feature or function 
that uh, enables you to uh, perform different board reports or uh, reporting as required. And we're going to talk about three of the products today, um, keeping on the theme of board reporting. We're going to look at reporting, forecasting, and multi. So this Spoiler Reporting, that's the first product that we've created. It's a household name in many accounting firms, you could say. And it's a powerful management reporting tool. You can create a standard report for a single organization, or you can consolidate up to 150 organizations into one report. It's very easy to use. You import the data, it comes through, and it just fills out into our report templates. So you've got a profit and loss, a balance sheet. All of this is calculated automatically based on that data. But in addition to that, you'll notice a number of visuals. We use charts quite a bit through our application and our reports, and that's because they paint a picture or a story that sometimes the tables, those uh, long tables of numbers just don't quite show, especially to the different members of the board. So with that chart, we're able to see those trends, those fluctuations, those seasonalities. We can do those comparisons and do much more than just looking at a table full of numbers. In addition to just reporting on the, the profit and loss and the balance sheet and these charts, we have custom pages where you can put in your commentary, your analysis, what's going on in the business and make recommendations. We've got specific charts all around the cash flow. So we can look at those important metrics in the business. You know, does the business have enough cash? Is it bleeding cash and so forth? And for the pieces of information that we just don't have, well, you have the ability to add an external content to fill out the report and provide a board pack that has everything that the board needs. The second product we created was Spotlight Forecasting. And Spotlight Forecasting, especially over these last five years, um, has been just such a valuable tool for many businesses. It allows you to create budgets and forecasts. You can forecast up to five years into the future. And to create your budgets, you can either just import it straight from your accounting system or start from scratch in our application. We have a number of rules and flexing options that allow you to quickly create your forecast for the year or up to five years. There are a number of rules you can use uh, within in order to uh, automatically calculate certain scenarios. Perhaps it's the loan amortization on a particular loan. Maybe it's fixed asset purchases, wages, tax payments, and so forth. We also utilize drivers or unit uh, model or unit-based forecasting. So you can actually go down into that granular level of price, quantity, um, and various other building blocks of a forecast, put that into our system, and then calculate your forecast based on that. And then once you've built out your forecast, why not create what-if scenarios? So create a scenario for what if things go much worse than we planned, or what if things go better? What if we change when we purchase that asset? Or what if we change the terms of that loan? Well, put that into a scenario, compare it to your forecast and see what the best outcome is. And one of the other tools that we're gonna to talk about is Spotlight Multi. Spotlight Multi is a tool that we designed for franchises and large associations where you might need to consolidate up to 500 organizations. And the focus here isn't necessarily to get a consolidated view, but more about comparing. How does one organization or one franchisee compare to another? Who is the top performer? Who is the worst performer? And who's not meeting their budgets, targets, and so on? And Multi has a range of reports that help you to cater to those reporting needs. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick over to a sample report to show you what a sample report in Swallow Reporting, Forecasting, and Multi looks like. We're not going to do a full demo because for the most part, once you use Spotlight and you've imported your data, you're not actually in our system. You're now looking at your reports and giving your commentary. So let's see what you're able to produce out of our application. So here we've got a cover page. And you can brand this, white label it, put your logo, put your colors, do all of those sort of things to really uh, convey the value and your professionalism to the board. In this particular report, we've got a number of pages and we're gonna discuss some of these really quickly. As I mentioned, the executive summary, this is a page where you can go in and just type in your commentary. 
It's a quick snapshot overview of what's happening in the business, report on the revenue, the gross profit, the bank, whatever it might be. Make some recommendations for action. The great thing about our executive summary is we have a number of auto text features and functionality, which allow these values, which you typically might have written up in your Word document or whatever it may be, these can actually be automatically populated based on the imported data. There's a number of options you can just select from, which will just create these, or you can create your own custom tags, which will populate these values for you, saving you much time. So the focus isn't on just typing in values, but more about analyzing. A board wants to know what's happening in the business. What are the key outcomes, objectives? Who's assigned them? What's the progress on it? So we have an action plan page where you can put four, six, or however many different actions, key steps or milestones, and report on the progress of these. Let's have a look at our profit and loss. Here we've got our profit and loss, revenue, costs, overheads. We're used to all of that. We've got our net profit, and we can compare it this year to last year. We can compare it to the budget if I wanted. It's just a matter of clicking the tick box, look at the last three months, look at our year-to-date budget, and get a projection for the year. It's as simple as just changing a few little options. You'll see there we have a number of nested rows here. So you have the flexibility of grouping accounts. So you can make this report as detailed or as summarized as you want. So there are some boards that love to see every single account line, which is great. But if you're in a business that has 200, 300 plus accounts, uh, it can be very distracting. So you can actually group your accounts into certain uh, headers so that you can just see what is the subtotal for that. If you're doing consolidated reports to the board, why not show each of the different organizations side by side so you can compare them? And if you do consolidations, you know there are intercompany transactions, whether it's in the profit and loss or the balance sheet, there's always those sales, those costs, those loans that uh, are transacted between the different entities. Well, with Spotlight reporting, you can eliminate those accounts. So it's very easy. We just go through and say, this particular account, it's an intercompany account, just eliminate it. Don't include it in my total. I only want to see my sales, my costs, my assets, my liabilities uh, that are to customers and my suppliers and so on. Here's our balance sheet, very similar. You have the ability to control the, the accounts, the columns, and everything else. But you can get a very quick snapshot view of the bank, the receivables, our assets, our equity, and so forth. And just as we did before, look at the balance sheet on an entity basis. Cash is king. We've all heard that saying before. So why not report on it? Right now, we can create these cash charts that show our inflows, our outflows, our trends, our highs and lows, how we're tracking to our monitors. Now, if you had typically been reporting using Excel, you probably would have stopped on page one or page two, just on the profit and loss. But just in this short period of time, we've actually looked through a number of charts, a number of pages, and all of this is just populated automatically. We're not even doing anything in our application. KPI target scorecard. This is one of my favorite pages because here we get a snapshot of how the business is doing. The profit and loss, it's great. The balance sheet is fantastic, but why not look at a KPI target scorecard to show how are we performing to target? If there are particular areas that need addressing, we can just go dive straight into those particular areas. Great report for a board. Many visuals, many charts, looking at a range of things, whether it's our profit and loss, our balance sheet, our cash, and so forth. There are hundreds of custom charts or default charts, and you can also create your own custom charts. And you can bring in non-financial information. So why report just on the financial when quite often the non-financial information tells the story of the business? So it could be your customer satisfaction rating, your sales conversion, number of new customers, all of these drive those values that we see in our profit and loss. So report on it. Bring it in via Excel or type it in or use one of our integrations that we have there. For example, we have our Google Analytics integration where we can immediately report on our website usage. 
I'm going to quickly run through some of our reports and spotlight forecasting. So very similar to reporting where we have a profit and loss, but now we're getting the full year forecast that we can see here based on all the rules and um, other settings we've applied. We can do with the balance sheet, see what our net assets will be at the end of the year. Create a cash flow forecast. So based on all our rules, we can figure out when cash is going to be received, when it's going to be paid out, and what our end of year bank balance is going to be like. And if we're creating scenarios, well, it's no point having them in isolation. Let's compare them. So here we can compare our forecast to our best case, our worst case scenario, and say what the impact would be, whether it's on the profit and loss or on the balance sheet. And then create KPIs and covenants. So if there are those covenants that you have with the bank because of some uh, lending agreement, maybe it's uh, interest percentage to revenue, uh, assets to liabilities, or whatever it may be, you can create those KPIs in Spotlight Forecasting, track them, and then just see how your different forecasts um, match up to those particular KPIs and covenants. So you can easily identify months where you may need to uh, change some values around um, to make sure you're meeting all those covenants. And when it comes to Spotlight Multi, this is our rankings page where you can see all your different franchisees benchmarked, ranked against one another, compare who's the top performer for revenue, gross profit, net profit, see some averages, some stats around the median top three and so forth. It's really powerful, especially when you're looking at large data sets. As I said, multi supports consolidating up to 500 organizations. And with our exceptions page, we can quickly go through and see which of our franchisees are meeting their targets or their budgets. And those who aren't, they're going to be highlighted in red. So we know who uh, needs help. And that's going to be good information that the board can see and make decisions around all of that. Those are just some of the pages that we have in Spoiler Reporting Forecasting Multi. Uh, we don't have time to go into it all, but as you can see there, with our range of templated options as well as custom options, you can build a board pack that uh, really delivers uh, value and provides insights about your business. Back to you, Alex. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nick. Wow, that's actually great because I remember back in the days I was working, uh, let me put it, I was working at the gaming company and each month we were doing such reports and it was a pure, pure nightmare because we had to do that in Excel. It takes many hours to combine all of the data you have from the different systems and it just takes so much time. I wish I had a tool like that. All right. So now with that being said, with both of the tools on the, on the table, on the board, it's time to ask yourself, is it true that you have already a great current approval process. Perhaps it needs to be changed in a way, perhaps it needs to be unified and make it a bit more auditable for everyone from the team. Do you feel like your reports show you the accurate real-time data? Or perhaps you need to add some additional tools in between that. Are you finding that you're creating the same reports or maybe you're just like uh, taking whatever data you have in the different systems and trying to combine that and trying to make some kind of a Frankenstein monster rather than actually having the real time data. And are your colleagues spending hours creating reports? So if your answer will be yes for all of these questions, perhaps it's time to change, change certain things in your process. And now we're coming to the Q&A section. So if I see that there was already a few questions were answered. Some of them are still pending. That's perfect. So, uh, Matthew is asking, great webinar. Will the recording be emailed out? Uh, yes, of course, we will send you the link to the recording once it gets processed alongside. I'm not sure about the presentation itself. I should ask probably our team, but the recording will be sent out 100%. Mm -mm. Nick, by the way, if you have any questions you want to answer, feel free to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, certainly. Well, maybe I can uh, do a couple while we're waiting for a few others for approval max. Um, so got a good question here in Spotlight. Can you show the profit and loss by department in forecasting and budget? Uh, not at this stage. So in a forecasting tool, it is just at that organization level. Um, in the future, we do want to implement the sort of tracked uh, forecast, but it's not something available right now. Uh, a similar question from Matthew. 
can the balance sheet and profit and loss be shown on a tracking category rather than entity basis? So in our tool spotlight reporting, yes, you can show the tracking category at the profit and loss uh, basis. So by all means, get all your tracking options, show them side by side, filter reports, do a whole range of things on that. We don't support the balance sheet uh, tracking at this stage, uh, just because we haven't had a lot of uh, feedback or requests for it, but we're starting to see uh, more interest in it. So it could be something that we look at adding in the future. It's actually quite the same thing. I, I see one of the questions. Uh, one June is asking, I understand credit note function is still not available for approval max link to QuickBooks Online. Please advise. It's a great question. It's actually just to be frank on this one. Accounts receivable side, especially on QuickBooks, it's such a small fraction of the business at the moment. However, question like this, if you're raising your feature requests or if we ask our team regarding such things, we'll move it much, much faster. So first of all, thank you for this question. We'll make sure to pass it over uh, to our product team. I believe we already do have that on the roadmap, but more we got answers from our customers, more, more likely it will be developed quite much, much quicker. So we're only always constantly looking for the answers and what the questions from our, from our customers. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, one question from Heather, is there a restriction on number of purchase orders, credit invoices or line items on invoices in approval max? Uh, that's a great question. No, no limitation at all. You can process as many purchase orders, bills, credit notes, whatever. Again, you can add as many users as you want to. There is no limitation on that. It's all included. So no worries about, about that. Mm -mm -mm. And I'll jump in to, for a couple of questions around Spotlight. Does uh, forecasting link back to reporting or are they standalone? Uh, yes, at the moment, they're standalone uh, products. There is plans to integrate uh, both those tools. Uh, there's just uh, a bunch of other work we're doing at this stage. Uh, we do have a, a way for you to bring it into forecasting uh, or back into reporting where you can um, export the data that you've created, your forecast pull it into zero and then import it into reporting. Um, but there are plans to integrate those two products together. Thanks for your question, Corey. Does Approval Max compatible with MyOB? Not at the moment, unfortunately. So our recent integration is with Oracle NetSuite. So in case some of your customers is using Oracle NetSuite, that will be our next big thing. Uh, so we do have some additional integrations that are coming in like with Deer Inventory, like with Airwallex. Uh, so there is a lot of going on and maybe that will be a thing for the future. So we might be integrating with MyOB maybe sometime in the future as well, but not at the moment. Right now it's zero, QuickBooks Online and Oracle NetSuite. Got a question here for Gerard. Uh, does the cash forecast include BAS and superannuation payments? Good question. Um, I just did not have time in that demo to cover everything in forecasting, but yes, it absolutely uh, does when it comes to superannuation, wages, uh, income tax, and, and a whole bunch of other tax payments that are required. Um, you can organize or record uh, when those payments need to be made and the like. So a lot of functionality there. Happy to give you a demo uh, to answer any specific questions you have. See question from Cesar, do we need approval max and HubDoc or approval max should be enough? It should be enough. HubDoc or any other OCR tool just might help you with the digitization of your invoices. But overall approval max, you can create your bills in approval max itself. You can approve all of those things. So it's not mandatory, but it's a good addition to approval max. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see another one. I, we actually running out of time, so I think maybe last two, three questions. And if we didn't answer some of your questions, don't worry about that. Our support engineers, our team will come back to you after this session and will answer all of your questions offline. So, uh, is there a way to pull through invoices waiting for approval from Approval Max into zero before they're approved in order to complete month ending reporting through an accrual? Great question, actually. It's not everyone knows about it, but there is a little feature in the report side of Approval Max. So if you build up the reports of all the invoices that are pending approval, right next to the, I think it's called save the report or some, there is a button, there will be three dots. 
If you click on these three dots, you will find a option to create an actual report for, for Zero. So you'll provide the narration, you'll provide a date and actual account, and it will create a CSV file for you that you can then import into your Zero account. So it's a great little tool that no one knows really about. Maybe we should talk about that a bit more. Um, Maybe I can jump in uh, to one of the questions from Gerard. Can different reports be restricted to specific users? Um, so within Spotlight, you create different organizations and you can give specific users access to those organizations. The reports themselves um, can't be, but you can actually um, email those reports out from our system. So the specific users can get a report that they need without necessarily needing access to our app. <laughs> Questions are falling and it's hard to keep track on what our support engineers are answering on the background, what we've answered already. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, Tamari is asking, I think that's for Prolomax. Uh, hello, just checking, what happens if an invoice is over the budget limit? Well, if that's for the budget checking feature, uh, your all of your approvers, they will see that there will be like a red sign, both when you click on the budget within Approval Max and just on the requires my decision screen, that will show you that you're over the budget. You will still be able to approve such bills because, you know, sometimes it might be that you've underspent in the previous month and you still need, you need to make sure that you've approved it even if you've spent more. But at the same time, you'll have an indication that you've already spent a bit more than you have on a budget. So maybe that would be a great time to talk either to the budget holder or maybe to reject the bill and send it back or maybe to postpone it until the next month. That is something for you to decide. But we won't block, it, block you or making this decision. Mm -mm -mm. All right, actually, I see we were already over the time. Um, sorry, thank you. First of all, thank you very much for all of your questions. It's great that you're so engaged audience and it's great to see all of these, all of these questions. We'll make sure to answer all of them, all of those that have, we are left after the session. Some of our support engineers will come back to you. Uh, just as a last few slides, we have one more poll to go. Very quick one, just for to understand your email preferences. So let me launch it real quick in order for us to understand if you want to receive some additional information or not. So feel free to answer this question. It's always the uh, frightening question, frightening poll, because you can always, you're always waiting that 100% will be like, no. <laughs> like, okay, guys, oh, well, thank you. But I see that the audience here is great. So. few more votes. All right, I think we can end the poll here. And well, there is no real need for, for us to share the results on this one. <laughs> it's not because it's all no, but just for it's more for internal use. And as for the last slide, if you want to give it a try, feel free to take a look at approvalmag.com or spotlightreporting.com, uh, play around with the data, play around with trial accounts, Drop us a line if you'll need any help. We'll be happy to assist you during the during the onboarding and reviewing sessions and so on and so on. Thank you very much for attending today's webinar. I hope that was useful. I hope you will bring something on board to your colleagues or to your company. And have a lovely rest of the day. Bye-bye.